What is going on guys? For football fans and pundits, it's always fun to debate which players are future Hall of Famers and which ones are not. In the end, the only opinions that matter are those of the Canton voters. But for the heck of it, we thought it'd be fun to make some way too early predictions in regards to which players on each team will make it to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So let's get right into it. Arizona Cardinals, five. Only Tom Brady, Drew Brees, and Aaron Rodgers are bigger Hall of Fame locks than Larry Fitzgerald. Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins will be a dynamic duo for years to come. We see them capturing a Super Bowl or two during their time together. Patrick Peterson is a lock, even if he retired today. And Chandler Jones is one of the elite pass rushers of his era. He still has plenty of time to add to his Hall of Fame resume. Atlanta Falcons, two. Matt Ryan's stats in 2016 MVP award should be enough to get him in. There are less great quarterbacks in the hall. As for Julio Jones, he's one of the best receivers of this era. He's as close to a lock as it gets for Canton. He'll be inducted in his first year of eligibility. Baltimore Ravens, three. We feel like we've seen enough from Lamar Jackson. He's revolutionizing the quarterback position, and he's poised to win multiple Super Bowls on a well-coached Baltimore team. Ronnie Stanley might be the best offensive tackle in all of football, and he's just entering his prime. Marlon Humphrey is arguably the best corner right now, and he's also just getting started. Buffalo Bills, one. Like Humphrey, Tredavious White is one of the NFL's elite young lockdown corners. He'll be a cornerstone on the Buffalo Bills for a long time. He's on a Hall of Fame trajectory, no doubt. We'd like to put Josh Allen here as well, but we need to see a lot more. He'll be in competition with so many other young, talented quarterbacks for many years to come. Carolina Panthers, one. Hard to find many potential Hall of Famers on this very young Carolina team, but workhorse running back Christian McCaffrey already feels like a good bet to get in. He's one of three running backs to hit the 1,000-1,000 club. A special breed indeed, and special breeds usually earn plenty of love from Canton voters. Chicago Bears, two. If Khalil Mack retired right now, he'd have a pretty fair shot at getting in. So the good news for him is that he's still in his prime and will only keep adding to what's been a phenomenal career. Eddie Jackson is one of the greatest all-around defensive backs of his era. He's still got a ways to go, no doubt, but we're already loving his chances. The Bears are gonna build their elite defense around him for a long time. Cincinnati Bengals, three. Joe Burrow's the real deal. We all know that. He's gonna be a superstar, a future MVP winner, and possibly a Super Bowl champion. Geno Atkins would get in if he retired today. His eight Pro Bowl selections speak for themselves. Longevity is the main issue for AJ Green, but he had 1,000 yards in six of his first seven seasons before injuries piled up. Hopefully Canton remembers how consistently dominant he was during his prime. That version of Green was a true Hall of Fame talent after all. Cleveland Browns, two. Gotta think OBJ will get in. He's been one of the most prolific offensive players of the last decade, and he's only 28 years old. Miles Garrett may end up being the best pass rusher of his era. We love what we've seen so far, and he gets better every year. Honestly, Garrett probably just needs five more Pro Bowl-like seasons to secure a spot in Canton. Dallas Cowboys, four. Tyron Smith and Zach Martin the anchors of one of the best offensive lines the game had ever seen. The perennial pro bowlers and multi-time all pros are shoe-ins at this point, easily. Say what you want about Dak Prescott, but the man is putting up Hall of Fame numbers early in his career, and Ezekiel Elliott will keep vying for rushing titles and 1,000 yard seasons as long as he stays healthy. Unfortunately, it's still too early to put C.D. Lamb on here, but we think he's got a great chance. For now, we'll stick with just four current Cowboys as future Canton members. Denver Broncos, one. Von Miller is in the group of players who'd be a lock even if he retired right now, only J.J. Watt and Aaron Donald have been as dominant as Miller over the past 10 years. He basically clinched his Hall of Fame case when he won Super Bowl 50 MVP honors after guiding Denver to its third Lombardi trophy in franchise history. We also think Jerry Judy is capable. We just need to see more before we deem him a future Hall of Famer. Detroit Lions won. The stats, the individual accolades, and most importantly, the longevity. Absolutely amazing what Adrian Peterson can do in his mid-30s. It's an era where so many great running backs slow down by their late 20s. So see you in Canton, AP. Green Bay Packers, two. Among all active players, Rodgers is a top five Hall of Fame lock. His star receiver, Devontae Adams, is building up an excellent case too. He's arguably a top five receiver in the game today, and we're willing to bet that he gets in at this point. A few more Pro Bowl seasons are required though. Houston Texans, two. Deshaun Watson is one of the NFL's top quarterbacks right now. Bill O'Brien wasted his early prime years, but Watson will eventually take this team back to Super Bowl contention. And uh, yeah, we don't need to explain much about J.J. Watt. You know the name. He's about as big of a lock as there is out there. 
Just ask all the offensive linemen he's bullied for a decade and counting. Indianapolis Colts, four. Gotta think that Phillip Rivers' stats gets him in. I mean, former Chargers great Dan Fouts is in the hall despite never winning a Super Bowl. So why not Phillip? DeForest Buckner and Darius Leonard anchor one of the league's best defensive lines. They're among the NFL's top young stars. We're sure Canton voters have taken notice early. And uh, Quentin Nelson is the best guard in football today. And he's still in his early prime years. We already love his chances. Jacksonville Jaguars. One, it's not seeing much Hall of Fame talent on a young rebuilding Jaguars team. But defensive end Josh Allen has all the makings to be a franchise star, and he should rack up the Pro Bowl and all pro selections over the long run. If we had to pick one Jag to get in, it's Allen. Kansas City Chiefs, four. Patrick Mahomes is the best player in football today, so he's a no-brainer. Travis Kelsey is also a lock, and Tyreek Hill is still young, but he'll likely get in as long as Mahomes continues to throw him the football. Don't just focus on the Chiefs offensive juggernaut, though. Chris Jones is a top-tier pass rusher who has a knack for coming up with clutch plays. That's how you sway the voters in Canton. We're giving Andy Reid's team at least four Hall of Famers at this point. Las Vegas Raiders, one. We're not ready to call the likes of Henry Ruggs or Josh Jacobs Hall of Famers just yet. But Jason Witten, the former Dallas Cowboys star, is undoubtedly getting in. Sure, his Hall of Fame career was crafted in Dallas for 16 years, but who cares? John Gruden can brag all he wants about having at least one future Canton member on his offense. Los Angeles Chargers, three. Joey Bosa has more than lived up to expectations as a pass rushing phenom. There is nothing to suggest that he won't sustain his long-term success, meaning he should get in. Keenan Allen was a force with Phillip Rivers, but young phenom Justin Herbert might do even greater things with the star wideout. This QB wide receiver duo will torch defenses for many years to come. Super Bowl dreams await the Chargers with all these future Hall of Famers. Los Angeles Rams. Two. Not only is Aaron Donald the best defensive player in the NFL right now, but he may be the best defensive player since Lawrence Taylor. What we do know for sure is that he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And hey, Jalen Ramsey could very well go down as the best cornerback of his era. At this point, there's no reason to believe either guy will be snubbed by Canton. Miami Dolphins. One. None of Miami's veterans look like potential Hall of Famers. But we're buying into the hype of Tua Tungavailoa, the number five selection of the 2020 draft. He has all the makings to be a franchise changer, like Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Joe Burrow. Now it's not too early to deem Tua a future Hall of Famer. Just watch. Minnesota Vikings, two. The Vikings really underachieved in so many ways during the Mike Zimmer era. But it's not at the fault of Pro Bowl safety Harrison Smith or pass rushing sensation Daniil Hunter. Both are among the NFL's elite at their respective positions. They were anchors on the Vikings' stingy defensive units that propelled them to playoff berths in 2017 and 2019. And they have all the time in the world to keep building up their already strong Hall of Fame cases. New England Patriots, one. They are the model NFL franchise, but with Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski long gone, the Pats' number of future Hall of Famers is very small. We've already suggested in previous videos that Julian Edelman and Stefan Gilmore aren't going to get in, but we do like Cam Newton's chances. He's proven that he's still a franchise caliber quarterback with an MVP award and an electrifying dual threat style. Hopefully that will be enough for the voters. New Orleans Saints, three. Drew Brees will be a first ballot Hall of Famer in his first year of eligibility. We all know that. Even when Breeze retires, Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara will continue to trash defenses with their explosiveness. Their days in the field together will be numbered, but it's only a matter of time before this offensive trio gets reunited in Canton. New York Giants, one. These Giants don't really offer much when it comes to star power and future Hall of Famers. But Saquon Barkley, one healthy, has looked every bit like a future Hall of Fame talent. Even the Giants' questionable coaching and management won't be able to stop him from getting in. New York Jets, one. Same as the Giants, not much talent on the roster, but the Jets do employ a guy who's been a Hall of Fame lock for a while now. Ageless wonder Frank Gore, who sits third all-time in career rushing yards. Gore obviously isn't a game changer on this awful Jets team, but that's irrelevant. He's getting in thanks to his phenomenal 10-year stint with the San Francisco 49ers. Philadelphia Eagles, three. By the end of the 2010 decade, Jason Peters and Jason Kelsey had combined for 12 Pro Bowl and five first-team All-Pro selections. And oh, they anchored the O-line that was instrumental in helping the Eagles win Super Bowl 52. Peter also has a 2010's All-Decade team selection that will further strengthen his case. Defensive tackle Fletcher Cox has often been somewhat overlooked, even though he's one of the NFL's premier game changers. Also a member of the 2010's All-Decade team, Cox still has several prime years left and will only continue to improve his Hall of Fame resume. Pittsburgh Steelers, three. No doubt that Roethlisberger is in with his two Super Bowls. Marquise Pouncey is practically an annual Pro Bowl and one of the best centers to ever do it. So we'll see him with a gold jacket one day too. TJ Watt, like older brother JJ, is on a Hall of Fame trajectory. He's quickly asserted himself as one of football's elite defensive players. Even if he's half as good as JJ, he's getting in for sure. San Francisco 49ers, 
four. Richard Sherman and Trent Williams have displayed the dominance and longevity to get in, both among football's absolute best at their respective positions. There's already a gold jacket with their names on it. Nick Bosa could emerge as the best pass rusher of his era. Who knows? And George Kittle might legitimately become the best tight end ever, if he can stay healthy. How could we not call these guys future Hall of Fame talents, given what we've already seen from them? Seattle Seahawks, three. Lots of easy selections in Seattle, starting with their franchise quarterback, Russell Wilson. And he'll be joined by five-time first-team All-Pro linebacker, Bobby Wagner. Jamal Adams, their new do-it-all workhorse safety, already feels like a lock as well. Thankfully, the Seahawks aren't wasting his talents like the Jets did. And then there's DK Metcalf, who has silenced all doubters early on, emerging as one of the NFL's most dominant wide receivers. That's two veterans who are guarantees, and two young stars who look like good bets already. There's something special brewing in the Emerald City. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, three. The GOAT is going in, we all know it. Rob Gronkowski, arguably the best tight end of all time, is also a lock. Mike Evans has shown that he can get it done with any quarterback, and he still has several more prime years in him. Have to think that he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer at this point, no? Tennessee Titans, two. Taylor Lewin has quietly been one of the NFL's most reliable offensive linemen since entering the league in 2014, with several good years left on a championship contending Titans team. We really like his odds. And uh, Derrick Henry already feels like a very safe bet. Terrell Davis got inducted with only four healthy and productive seasons. Henry may not age well like so many other great running backs, but he might only need a couple more Pro Bowl seasons to get in. The 2019 rushing title, coupled with his many highlight reel runs, playoff heroics, and numerous franchise records, give him a very strong case already. Washington Washington football team, one. Lots of young talent on this roster, namely on defense, but we can only deem Chase Young a future Hall of Famer at the moment. He's an absolute sure thing to shine. Even on a dysfunctional Washington team, Young could be on Aaron Donald's level in short time. We'd be absolutely shocked if this guy wasn't a first ballot Hall of Famer when it's all said and done. Which other players do you think are Hall of Famers that we didn't include on our list? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, we are on everything. Go find us. Go subscribe, go follow. Of course, subscribe to TPS on YouTube right down below that red button. Because if you never have, it'd be a really good first thing to subscribe to. And also, it helps us out and we appreciate it. And there's sport content all the time. And like this video too, because that's also awesome. And you're awesome. And life is awesome even during COVID. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. My knee.